Andrew Tucker, and welcome to Andrew Tucker World. What's going on, all my great people? What's going on, all my boxing fans? Um, Naoya in the way, Monster in the way is a beast. One of my favorite fighters, pound for pound. One of the best fighters in the world, pound for pound. Elite level, superior skilled fighter. Uh, and and he's a monster. He's a beast. I appreciate his style. Love his. I love his. I love what he do in the ring. He dominates. He execute. Smart, smart fighter. The ring generalship. The ring IQ. Explosive, dominant, pure boxer puncher. He's a master, and he's a master in that ring. The way he dominated another one of my of uh, uh, favorite fighters. You know, uh, in that weight class. You know, uh, and within the weight classes. You know, Stephen Fulton, you know, in that unification bout with him and Monster, you know, nobody expected Monster to dominate uh, Stephen Fulton that way because he, we knew that Stephen Fulton is a, is a very, uh, very, very highly skilled elite level fighter as well. And when I take nothing away from the kid, I take nothing away from him. I said that Monster was going to knock him out, but I, would, I knew it was going to do to Power shots, power counters, explosive combinations to the body, to the head, to the head, to the body, mixing up the attacks. Once make properly making the proper adjustments, necessary adjustments to, to slowly start to break down Fulton with accumulation of power shots. And I knew it was going to be one shot you catch him clean with, whether it was the chin, the temple, to the head, or to the body. You know, one of those liver sh rib, you know, rib, rib shots, you know kidney shots, whatever, <laughs> to the ribs, to the body, break them to the body, you know, uh, Monster, and they all, they all, they, they listen, um, they all, yeah, in a way, had a great year last year, you know, destroying Stephen Fulton, when I tell, told you, I'm telling you guys, I picked him to, to knock out Fulton, I did not, I did not see him, uh, uh, knocking out Fulton as soon as he did, you know, early, you know, so early in the fight like that. And he goes on to fight very tough fighter in Marlon, uh, Tapless, <clears throat> you know, and I knew that was going to be a highly competitive fight, uh, two skilled fighters. I knew that was going to be highly competitive. Um, and I knew that that, that was a big fight, you know, uh, a, a, a big fight. You know, in that weight class, it was a big fight of uh, undisputed, undisputed matchup, undisputed title fight. And I knew that was going to be a highly competitive fight between two skilled warriors. Uh, I gave the slight edge to 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 Monster in a way to Naoya because of the power. And I, I felt that he was slightly the smarter fighter. Not taking nothing away from Marlon, uh, Marlon, uh, Tapolis, Tapolis, but I, I, I felt that in a way it was going to break him down, stop him, you know, uh, mid to late, you know, I could say more to, towards one of the, one of the late rounds, later rounds, he was going to stop him, but I knew it was going to be a great fight leading up to the stoppage, but I knew, um, I knew that monster was going to separate, you know what I'm saying? I knew he was going to separate. To, to break him, slowly execute, slightly being a smarter fighter, break him down, execute the game plan, making proper adjustments, smart adjustments to, to, to that leads to a technical knockout. All right, felt it could have been a unanimous decision, UD for, for Monster in a way. He is my number two. He is my number two pound for pound fighter in the world. He is my number two pound for pound fighter in the world. Um, Crawford is my number one. Um, and we can't forget about we, we can't forget about the the dominant performance over a legend, one of my favorite fighters growing up, one of my favorite fighters within the weight classes. Nonito Denier, the Filipino Flash. Shout out to Nonito Denier. Great, he was a great fighter. Watching him, you know, as a you know, as a as a young adult, uh, in my late teens to early twenties, mid twenties, early thirties, watching him dominate and fight. You know, uh, Nonito is a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. Monster beat him. 
you know, and there were several other good fights, you know, several other good fights coming from Monster, destroying guys, you know, it, it's, it was it was quite a few, you know, the Jason Maloney, you know, I remember that fight, you know, I remember the first time he fought Nonito Denier, that was a controversial, very controversial fight, I felt Monster won the first fight, but Nonito, well, Nonito had to, no Nito welcomed him to that division, stepping up against a monster like, like No Nito De Nier, the Filipino Flash. You know, that made that made Monster in a way, Neoya in a way, a better fighter. Fighting No Nino, No Nito De Nier, the first fight. That made him a better fighter. That made him go back to the drawing board. That made him, you know, perfect it, further perfect his craft, evolve as a, as a fighter, get better, enhance his skills. Become even more a superior, fundamentally sound fighter on an elite level. You know, in Monster, in a way. He's my number two pound for pound. Reason why I have him my number two pound for pound because of what he's accomplished in the sport. You know, one of the best fighters in the world. But the best fighter in the world. And my number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I gotta keep straight. I gotta keep it. Gotta keep it real. I know all this back and forth. Uh, Naoya, in a way, is number one pound for pound. If you guys got him number one, who, whatever boxing channel, whatever boxing fan, whatever uh, uh, boxing personnel uh, that got you know Na Naoya in a way, monster in a way, that got that has monster as number one. I can respect your decision. I really respect you. I respect you as having him number one pound for pound. I, I, I know why and I see why. Because it's really, you know, he's really accomplished a lot in the sport so far in his career. Fighting fighting tough opposition after tough opposition. Monster after monster. You know, and elite, elite level fighters on his resume. You know, the accolades. But my number one pound for pound fighter is Terrence Bud Crawford. I give Terrence Bud Crawford the number one spot. And the reason why he is my number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Because of the bigger names. The bigger names. It's, it's, it's bigger names as far as not just what they accomplish in the sport. But bigger names as far as. The recognition. And I don't, I always look at the accolades. I always look at what a fighter has accomplished in the sport. I look at that over the legacy, the fighting fights. I look at that over, you know, just being a popular fighter. I look at you capturing the titles, moving up weight classes, capturing titles, moving up another weight class, cap capturing titles, and the best fighting the best. That's what I approve of more than anything in this sport. I look at Terrence, I look at Terrence Boyd Crawford. He's been doing that for a very long time. When he fights dangerous champions, when he fight elite level champions like Victor, like the Vic, like a Victor Postal, before moving up, you know, I look at him fighting Olympians like Felix Diaz. You know, I look at him fighting Olympians like Felix Diaz. You know, I look at him uh, uh, fighting champions, very rugged and. Awkward, dangerous champions and 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 and, and Julius and Dongo. People may be like, "Oh, they don't appreciate his style. I love his style." But you go look at a, a Julius and Dongo resume. Go look at go look at his fights, pre previous fights leading up to the Terence Crawford fight. So you'll get a better understanding why that fight was big, and and Crawford dominated a uh, undefeated and dangerous fighter in Julius and Dongo. You know, to become un you know to become undisputed. That was a big fight. Julian Zandango was a monster, whether you appreciate his style or not. Like, his style was difficult for a lot of fighters before meeting Crawford. And then you, and then you got Olympians like Thomas, Thomas Delorme, De, De, De you know, you know, very tough fighters. You know, uh, I remember Crawford fighting against uh, uh, da, uh, the dangerous Eurekas Gamboa when he was one of the best pound for pound, pound, for pound fighters in the world. When Eurekas Gamboa was at his best, young, dangerous, hungry, the favorite in the fight against Crawford. 
and he was slightly bigger, I believe, as far as muscle mass. Bigger fighter. People felt he was the harder puncher. People felt he was fast, too fast for Crawford. Too fast, too strong, too explosive, too dangerous for Crawford. For guys that really know the sport and follow the sport and know the history of the sport. At that time, Eureka's Gamboa was that superstar. Was that He was literally that Cuban superstar. He was that Cuban fighter. I believe Puerto Rican. Is he Puerto Rican? I, guys, please forgive me. Sometimes I forget. It's been a long time. Since, uh, since they fought, since that fight, you know, I've been a long time, but, you know, Eureka's Gamboa was a threat, was a monster, that's destroying everybody, he was like 23 and 0, all his, all, pretty much almost all his fights, knockouts, you know, destroying cats, and Crawford wasn't the favorite, pull off the upset, in a very dangerous fight with the very hard hitting, explosive, very fast, dangerous boxer puncher in Eureka's Gamboa. Was the promising, was promised as the future of the sport of boxing. Eureka's Gamboa was that guy. Crawford fought against UK's own. You know, he fought against UK's own. You know, uh, UK's own, he, UK's own Ricky Burns. You know, and... That was that, he. He went up against a very awkward, dangerous champion. A uh, very uh, flashy, slick, slick style uh, Scottish fighter, and and uh, and Ricky Burns, and it, it it really was it really was a highly competitive fight that Crawford started to make the <coughs> make make great adjustments. Started to get into rhythm and dominate, and to be a uh, elite level caliber fighter in Ricky Burns was not easy. If you really knew the sport, you knew that Ricky Burns, I I believe, also was the favorite in that fight. Um, you know, I look at a lot of great fights. You know, when it came to Crawford dominating guys, and then when he, of course, he moves up. To fight a Jeff Horn, whether you appreciate Jeff Horn's style or not, Jeff Horn was undefeated, dominating guys with his awkward style, his with his ruggedness, you know, as being a as being a boxer puncher, awkward fighter, you know, controversial win, you know, over Manny Pacquiao, the legendary Manny Pacquiao. But I look at the the previous fights, you know, Jeff Horn was a very big fighter, champion, very big, strong welterweight. Big, huge welterweight. Crawford was too small. Some believe that, that Jeff Horn was going to run over Crawford. The way he handled him and threw him all over the ring to stop him, Crawford did against a Jeff Horn. What Pacquiao wasn't able to do. And I love Pacquiao. One of my best fighters in the world. The greatest fighters, one of the greatest fighters that ever lived, Manny Pacquiao. I felt Pacquiao edged that fight, though. You know, and style makes fights. You know, I, don't, I ain't into that triangle theory. Style makes fights. You know, Crawford fights against dangerous fighters like, you know, Jose Benavidez Jr. You know, he fights against big, strong guys like that. Big, dangerous fighters like that. You know, dominates uh, fighters that a lot of people was faster than, believe that was faster than him, but they believe he went in the same fighter. Um, But fast, was faster than Crawford. Fast on his feet in Crawford. Feel that he they were he was gonna beat. You know, some people favor Crawford though. And some people felt Amir Khan was just too fast for Crawford. But he beat legend, uh, 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 a legend. In my eyes, I believe Amir Khan for what he's able to what he was able to accomplish in the sport before before the defeats later on in his career. And, you know, suffered a few earlier, but you know, what Amir Khan was able to accomplish being that, the future of boxing. Recognize that's the future of boxing. You know, Al Crawford went in there, dominated him. You know, I didn't like the way that fight ended, but 
you know, Olympian, another Olympian in me in, 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 in me machine, very hard hitting fighter, difficult style for anybody. Olympian, Olympian like me machine. You know, uh Kavalaskis was a monster. Gave Crawford the style was the style was difficult at first for Crawford. Crawford made the adjustments, got into rhythm, started to make the proper smart adjustments, broke them down and stopped them. You know. He went in there against a Cal Brook, was 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 moved moved back down from 154. Um I'm um I mean I'm sorry. Cal Brook was coming from 154 and moved back down, being the bigger, stronger fighter. He was bigger than Crawford, stronger, uh, active, active fighter, dominating guys at 154 to move down to 147 to feel the fit to feel that he was going to knock out and stop. The smaller fighter in Crawford being stronger and having the skills to match his skills. And Cal Brooks saying he felt the best he ever felt. No excuses. If he said he felt feel good and going into the fight, why boxing fans make excuses for Cal Brook? Cal Brook ain't making none. Went in there, first three rounds, one against Crawford. Crawford made the adjustment. Boom, caught him slipping. Boom, boom. Brook, Cal Brook made a mistake. Crawford capitalized on that mistake and then stopped Cal Brook. A caliber fighter. Recon, uh, 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 that has a lot of recognition, former champion, you know, Sean Porter, former champion, Crawford stopped him, great fighter in Sean Porter, great fighter, two division, I mean, uh, two-time champion, Sean Porter, fought the best, had a big name, big name in the sport, was highly respected in the sport, great, great future Hall of Famer, Sean Porter, David Avenesian, former champion, Dominating guys, you know, come back, you know, you know, to 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 once again prove himself. Former champion David Avenesian, he pull off. He was the guy to pull off some ups, to, to walk away with some upsets. Former champion David Avenesian, Crawford stopped him. Maybe people maybe may have felt that he wasn't the same fighter, but we're we're looking at the champions. Future Hall of Famers, fighters that have the recognition, fighters that have that that, that have a major impact on the sport, recognizable names. And I don't always look at the popularity, but I also look at that they were champions and Olympians. The biggest fight of Terence Crawford career, former Olympian, pound for pound fighter in the world, pound for pound fighter in the world, Earl Spence Jr. Great fighter. Take nothing away from Earl. One of the best fighters in the world. Dangerous boxer puncher. Pound for pound fighter in the world. Earl Spence Jr. Crawford went in there. Made smart adjustments. Got into rhythm. Showed skills. Showed superior skills. Elite level skills. Broke Spence down and stopped him. That is my number one pound for pound fighter in the world. It's Terrence Bud Crawford. In a way, it's my number two for the reasons why I how I just broke it down on why Crawford number one, in a way number two. But however you guys wanna, if you guys want to switch that switch that around, I'm okay with it. But I just gave you my reason why Terrence Boyd Crawford is number one. He is number one.